trick. Okay, ready?
mistake, believe it or not, it's true, I do make mistakes every once in a while. I, I know, I know. My mistake was, I forgot to introduce Chelsea. Yeah, Chelsea. Chelsea, the newest member of our worship team. And this is my first time hearing her, and all I can say is, awesome. Well, I think you can be better than that. Yeah. That's a sweet church welcome. How's the soup? Good. Good. I can't eat it. It's got mushrooms in it. You, you can have it. So, I wanted to just share some, uh, some announcements. Now, um, next Sunday, the 19th, we're going to be back outside. So, we're pretty much outside again until March uh, the 19th, and then we'll be back inside for Street Church. And then probably over the summer, we'll be outside again. And then I'm going to work, I'm working on trying to see if we can get inside more often. So I'm working on that. So next Sunday, next Sunday we're going to do burgers and fries. Now, I, I got a question. How many of you tried the New York style hot dogs? And were they good? Okay, so, so I'm going to be creative. How many have ever been to Peter's in County? Okay. You know, they make good burgers. So we're going to call this the Chuck Burger. I'm not 100% sure what it's going to look like or how it's going to work, but we're going to, we're going to try and uh, do something special with the burgers and fries, okay? And uh, I've been practicing already, testing here and testing there. So, Anyways, on the 19th, the night, or on the 20th, I mean, it's going to be the long weekend. So we're doing bag lunch Monday. So uh, we won't have the trailer because I've got to take it to do uh, the Vipers. Uh, the Vipers are doing a family day game. And uh, how many of you have seen a Foxy Sons van with our logo on it? So, so this last year, Foxy Sons uh, wrapped the van and so we won. And so, on Thursday, I'm going to go see them, and they're going to give us a check for the last year, which is awesome. And because things were kind of cuckoo for Poker Pops with COVID and everything, our man is going to run again next year, this coming year. So they're doing a big thing at the Vernon Vipers game on the 20th. So the trailer and we are going to be there. So we're going to do something here. we will probably just be that one. Okay? All right. So, it is audience participation time. So, is everybody ready? Okay, here we go. In this house. In this house. Do you, do you guys want more soup or food? Okay, let's try this again. Okay, in this house. In this house. We are broken. We are broken. Okay. How many, we've been doing this for a couple of years, sir. Huh? You just got, all right, everybody follow me. Here we go. One, two, three. In this house. In this house. house. We are real. We are real. We are broken. We are broken. We make mistakes. We make mistakes. We forgive. We forgive. We give second chances. We give second chances. We serve. We serve. We give. We give. We do really loud. Okay. We are here to build community. And we love as Jesus loves. Amen? All right. So, it's really important you pay attention to this because there's going to be a test at the end of my message. That might be, there might be a reward. No, we do So, anyways, um, Sherry... I'm going to ask Sherry to come up here, and Sherry is going to give her us her story.
He's coming on Timbuktu. Yeah. I was born on a farm, a little house in the prairie style, went to school with a horse. Grew up in bare feet, and I uh, stayed with my grandmother a lot, and so she took me to church and to Bible vacation school, and at eight years old I gave my heart to the Lord. And I served the Lord very faithfully right up until my late teens, and then I got in with a bad crowd. So me and three guys. Had a big one-ton truck and we used to go out drinking and partying and got myself into a whole bunch of mess. And but God didn't let go of me. He kept his hand upon me. He spoke to me, even in all of the things that I was doing. And um, he kept drawing me by his Holy Spirit. And I got married and um, that turned out to be a disaster. Had a couple of kids, there was something wrong with both of them, but my God was there with me every inch of the way. And when we sing songs like we did this morning about hope and, and my God can do it, and no matter what you think, nothing's impossible with him. And so um, while I was pregnant with my first son, my husband was buried alive in a potash mine. They said he would never walk or hardly talk again. He, uh, within a few weeks, he was out of the hospital and uh, went back to work, and so I know that God can do the impossible. My oldest son was born with a condition. His, his body didn't produce softer adrenaline. The doctor said he wouldn't live. My God can do the impossible, he lived. And he lived right up until he was 18 years old. My second son had, was born with learning disabilities. He's on his own, my God can do the impossible. I've been in five motor vehicle accidents. I've had my head bashed on rocks a couple times, my sternum broken, my hip damaged. They told me I wouldn't be able to talk or drive again. I'm doing both. <laughs> and I can dance because my God can do the impossible. So when my kids were little or when I was drinking, my oldest boy said to me, Mom, you're not nice when you drink. And I quit drinking that day. And 36 years ago, 36 and a half years ago, I gave my heart back to the Lord. Not just my heart, I gave him everything. And I haven't looked back since. And some of those accidents, when they said I couldn't do it, I stood in God's word. I went forward for prayer. People laid hands on me. And even doctors, one doctor said, that's impossible. When I had prayer and God healed me. And the doctor didn't even believe it, but here I am. So I should have been dead, but I'm alive. God bless you. Thank you for sharing.
this is our community. This is this is my community. This the our team of volunteers, the people that come regularly. This is community. This is in sense of home. So I want to read uh, a, a, a section of scripture. Uh, now this passage, the apostle Peter wrote this to Christians, people who were who were following Jesus. And it says, finally, all of you should agree and have concern and have love for each other. You should also be kind and humble. Don't be hateful and insult people just because they are hateful and insulting. Instead, treat everyone with kindness. You are God's chosen ones and He will bless you. The scriptures say, do you really love life? Do you want to be happy? Then stop saying cruel things and quit telling lies. Give up your evil ways and do right. As you find and follow the road of peace, the Lord watches over everyone who obeys him and he listens to their prayers. But he opposes everyone who does evil. Can anyone really harm you for being eager to do good deeds? Even if you have to suffer for doing good deeds, God will bless you. So stop being afraid and don't worry about what people might do. Honor Christ and let him be the Lord of your life. Always be ready to give an answer when someone asks you about your hope. Give a kind and respectful answer and keep your conscience clear. This way you will be able, this way you will make people ashamed for saying bad things about your good conduct as a follower of Christ. And then finally, Christ died once for our sins, and an innocent person died for those who are guilty. Christ did this to bring you to God. When his body was put to death, his spirit was made alive. Um, now in verse 4, 1, it says, Christ suffered here on earth. And we have to turn our own desires and want to obey God for the rest of our lives. That's something that I've chosen to do. Now, when I put this banner together a few years ago, I did it with the thought and in mind of trying to do something that built community. So every street church for the last four or five years, we've done this. And I have fun doing it with you. And you have fun doing it with me, even though maybe sometimes it's boring. But it's the, the whole purpose of it is to build community. And the passage in Peter was written to Christians, occurring, encouraging Christ followers to treat people with love, dignity, and respect. In building community, I'm hoping you feel that I, as the pastor, as the leader, treat you with love, and dignity and respect. And if you don't, you always you always know you can call me on it. Our team of volunteers, we do the same thing. We endeavor to love you and to treat you with dignity and respect. Now here's a question. What makes us different? What makes us different? What draws people to us? And we got an answer, a thought, special need. Like they got a need. They got to okay. About it. Yeah. Okay. What makes now? Here's a here's a here's a, a scary question I'm going to ask. But what makes people want to be around me or us? Is salvation. It? Salvation. Salvation. Okay. Is it my charming, witty personality? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> it is our hope that we can be an island of wholeness in a world of brokenness. It is my hope that we can be an island of wholeness in a world of brokenness. It is my hope that we can reflect the love of Jesus to you and those who come across our path. That people want to hang out with us. Now, as, as I was...
pondering this passage of scripture, I have a lot of different thoughts going in my mind. And one of the things that came to me was there's a recurring theme in my life. And the life of those that I have hung out with for most of my life. I've been like, they, they asked this morning at to a church, how many years you've been a Christian? And I stood up when, I, when they said 40. And there's people who've been 50, 60, 70 at church there. And I go, whoa, that's a long time. And, and one of the things that happened was when I first got saved, I, I was drunk. And there was, a burning, there was a coffee house in the basement of First Baptist Church called the Burning Bush Coffee House. And so I went there and I hung out with other drunks and hippies and, and different things like that. And, and there was a sense of community. And then when we started the scene in Calvary in the basement of First Baptist Church, 1984, we started another sense of community, sense of a sense of building something, something that was bigger than us, bigger than me. And then we moved, and then we moved from the basement of First Baptist in Calgary to the 102 building, which is just underneath the Calgary Tower. It's a big, a big building. And the main floor of the 102 building was called the living room. And that's where we had coffee house, and we had chapel, and everybody had meals, and then later on, the, we had mats, so everybody slept on the floor there. Even the, the drop-in centers I, I founded, or I worked in, uh, I worked with Soul of Youth for, for a number of years. I wanted to build a sense of community. I wanted to be, build a sense of oneness, of wholeness. Even at the mission, when, when I was working at the mission, we would, uh, we would do what we would call family time. How many of you remember doing family time when I was there? And we would do the, uh, we would do the daily bread and, and we'd get everybody to sit down. I would do that joke, grab your seats. You remember, anybody remember that? It was a lame dad joke then, it's a lame dad joke now. But anyways, so everybody would sit down and we would, we would say grace, we would read the daily bread, and then there was a sense of family, a sense of community. Our hearts want to be in community. Our hearts want to create a sense of belonging, to be needed, to be wanted. How many remember watching uh, the TV show Cheers? Okay. And what would happen when the big guy would walk in down in the into the bar? Norm. Norm. That's it. A sense of community, a sense of oneness, a sense of belonging. And we want to be loved, to be a part of something bigger than ourselves. So the question I'm going to ask you. Is your life based upon blame, or is it based upon Christ? And, and what, do, what do I mean by that? Like, is, is Jesus real to you? And a lot of times, when I was growing up, the, the abuse that I suffered growing up, and just different stuff that happened in my life, I would blame my dad or I would blame others, or I would blame all the circumstances. And I've, I've learned since I became a Christian that I can't blame others for everything all the time. That I, that I gotta own my own stuff. So when I ask you, Jesus is real, do you have something that's real in your life? Does God seem like it's something real? And my question, I've got lots of questions today, so uh, you're going to leave here with a lot of thoughts, I hope. But do you have a faith in Christ? Do you believe in God or not? Do you feel broken or fractured? Like life just, life just doesn't uh, mean anything or it just sucks or 
stuff going on. Now, I, you guys know me, and you know, I'm a straight talker, and I, 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 I care. And, I, and to be honest with you, I'm tired of seeing people die on our streets. Okay? It wrecks me. I hate it. We're getting ready to do another memorial for another person who passed away from a drug overdose. That wrecks me. And that keeps me going, too. Because my faith in Christ keeps me going. My hope in Christ keeps me going. My ability to be able to share the love of Jesus with you by walking my talk, by being there in the trenches with you, shows me that my faith is real. And I hope, I hope, I hope it shows you that my faith is real, that my Jesus is real. And I look at, I look at you and what makes your life real? What makes your life have meaning and purpose and hope and healing? It sucks when people, it sucks when people are living in a world that has no hope, that doesn't have any healing. And it's, it's my, it's my life's ambition, my life's goal to be able to share that hope and healing. So right now, what is taking place in your heart? I tell you in my heart, some recent events make my heart so heavy and bring a sense of sadness that is not easily explained. Now, as I've shared, different things have really wrecked me and hurt me, the loss of people I know, people I've built a relationship with. But something even more deeper than that is the hurt and the pain that I have caused to others. The broken relationships that I have in my own life, in my own personal family, from stuff that I said or did or did do. And it wrecks me to the core. I'm so sad that people won't talk to me anymore. I'm so sad that I conned them and played them and used them and hurt them and beat them and did whatever. I'm so sad that I did that. And because of that, I have a broken relationship with my children, with some of my family members because of what I did or what I used to be like before Christ. The broken relationships and the hurt and the pain and the anger and the mis mistrust, these are things that I struggle with. And yet my faith is real because I have hope. I'm not the guy that I used to be. I'm not that same guy. God has changed me. My faith is real because I know with absolute certainty I am forgiven. God forgave me. The hard part is forgiving myself. The hard part is when somebody doesn't forgive me, how do I live with that? How do I, how do I go on with that? I can't own it. That's on them. It's not on me anymore. Stuff, stuff used to, when people were like that, I'd go get drunk, or I'd go get mad, or I'd go F them, or whatever, you know? Now I can't do that. It's on them. It's on them. And you can feel that same way in your own life. You can have hope, you can have healing, you can have change. In John 17, 22, it says that Jesus wants to be one with you. He wants to be in community with you. He wants to be a family, to be journeying together. Now, it's not my intent to be a to be a bummer and to bring you down and woo. It's my hope that I can bring you joy. It's my hope that I can bring you hope in our broken and fractured world. My hope is the thing that keeps me going. It, and it's in knowing that Jesus saved a wretch like me. I just got hurt. 
And I know people he has saved and changed many times. People I know who, who I'm in relationship with. People like Sherry who shared his story. Others like Gail who shared his story one time. God is in the business. Remember I said last month, God, we're in, he's in the rescue business. And we're here to rescue. And all I'm asking you is to believe. It's actually not so hard to believe that there's a God that loves you, that cares for you. It's harder to believe in a guy, I used to do this with kids uh, when I was working at YFC, these troubled youth that think they were all that and so on. I would grab my bag of nacho chips, uh, Cool Ranch nacho chips, and I say, do you believe that Buddy here on the back end of this nacho chips made these chips? He said, yeah. I said, why? He said, because it says so on the back of the bag. And I go, well, do you know what? You have no idea. Somebody could have just stapled that in and said they did it. It could have been Bubba instead of John that made the chips. It took more faith to trust in a bag of chips than it does to trust in God. Because God says it takes the faith the size of a mustard seed to move mountains. All you got to do believe. And then the second thing you got can do is ask. If, if you don't believe it, if you think it's a, a crock or whatever, all you got to do is ask. You got nothing to lose. And then if you decide that you want to ask and you want to try and you want to change, like the addict, it's just one day at a time, it's one step at a time. You're not alone, there is hope. And all I'm going to do, I don't do this very often, but what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. This is a sacred moment. This is between you and God. And I'm going to pray with you and just ask, people are just going to pray and ask Jesus to be my Lord and Savior. If you don't want to do it, you don't have to do it. Just bow your heads and quiet and we'll go from there, all right? Heavenly Father, I thank you that you have forgiven me for my sins, my wrongdoings, all that crap and crud that I've done in and that I've experienced in my life. I thank you that you've forgiven me. I thank you that you have given me hope and healing and a sense of direction and purpose. And I pray, Lord, that you will help me to live a better life, a new life, a life of hope and healing and forgiveness. In your name we pray. Amen. You guys feel like doing another song? Go for it. Okay. And we got lots of soup.
Thank mm-hmm. you.